Hi, and welcome to Cooking with Beef Fat. I'm your host, Joshua Glenn. Today we're doing one of my favorite indulgent dishes, jambalaya, but more specifically, Creole jambalaya. In Louisiana, there are two types of jambalaya. Some call it brown jambalaya, which is Cajun jambalaya, or the red jambalaya, which is Creole. So today we're gonna make Creole jambalaya, which is tomato-based. So to get started, we're gonna start with our tomatoes. All right, so we're gonna start with a 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes. And we're gonna crush these tomatoes. And the reason you want to use whole tomatoes is because you're going to use the juice from the tomato. And if you're using crushed tomatoes, they have a chemical in them that keeps the tomatoes together so the tomatoes don't really dissolve into the meal like you'd want it to. So we're gonna use whole and we just crush those up and we set aside the tomato pulp for later and we take our juice and we have about a, about a cup and we're going to take some chicken stock and we're going to just make four cups of juice. And once we get about that four cups, we're just going to set that aside. You may need a little bit more than this, so it's always good to have extra chicken stock on hand, um, just in case you need it. So that we have four cups, we're going to set this aside, and we're going to get our oven going. So here we have about a pound of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You could use uh, regular, like, breast chicken if you want to. Um, you could even use leftover, like, fried chicken, take the skin off and uh, rip the chicken off the bone, and then just put it in later. Um, in the recipe instead of cooking it. But we're just gonna season this really good with some salt and some pepper. And I'm also going to do some Creole seasoning. And we're using a no salt Creole seasoning uh, so that we can control the salt content. I'm just gonna kind of be liberal with it. Do both sides here. And then we'll throw it into our pan. All right, so I have a heavy pan here. Um, I would really prefer to use like a Dutch oven or a cast iron pot, uh, but I have a heavy pan here. And we've just added some oil, about a tablespoon, and we're over medium high heat. I'm just gonna take our chicken and we're gonna throw them in there. We're gonna give them about six minutes on each side till they're brown. And what we're doing is we're layering the flavor. This is the same pot that we're gonna make our jambalaya in. So we're just layering all the flavor. Okay, we're we'll give this about six minutes, and then we'll give them a turn. All right, so we are ready to flip these over, and see we got some nice color here. And we're also adding a lot of good flavor down the bottom of that pan that we'll be able to get up in just a little bit. And we're gonna flip these over and let them go for about six more minutes, and then we'll take them off and let them rest for five minutes, and then we'll uh, cut them up. Now we're gonna add some andouille sausage. And if you can't find andouille sausage, which is a case like a Cajun sausage. Um, you can totally use any smoked sausage that you want. Um, we're just going to let these brown up about three minutes. We're not going to let them go too long. Um, if you find, if you're worried about uh, the bottom of your pan burning, that fond down there that's with those little brown bits in the bottom of your pan, it's called, it's called fond. You can just turn down the heat a little bit, or you can add in some, a little bit of extra oil um, just to keep it from burning and sticking down there. Uh, but we're going to give this about three minutes, and we'll be back. All right, so now we've fried off our andouille, and see, you got, you got some stuff like stuck to the bottom of that fawn there. It's just flavor. What's gonna happen is when we add these vegetables in here, the moisture that comes off the vegetables is gonna help release that flavor. And so we're gonna start with the onions, and we're just gonna kind of scrape the bottom as we stir them, and kind of help to glaze the pan. And of course, we're using the Holy Trinity, and Creole uh, Jambalaya use the Holy Trinity, which is onions, bell pepper, and celery. And we're gonna let these cook down just a little bit and let that flavor come up the bottom there. And we'll be back with you. All right, so as you see, the bottom is completely clear and clean now and our vegetables have turned translucent, slightly golden. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And we're just gonna stir that around for about a minute. Get it kind of in there. Let it brown up a little bit. Um, it's believed that jambalaya came from Spaniard immigrants who were trying to make paella um, in the region of uh, Louisiana. And because of shipping crisis for like saffron and things like that, and the amalgamation of different cultures like the West Indies and African and French cooking, um, this is what kind of came out of it, and I am so glad that we did. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna add our sausage back in there. And give it a stir. 
And then we're gonna add in some seasoning. So I've got some Cajun seasoning in here, a regular thyme, a pinch of cayenne, and some garlic powder. And we're just gonna kinda throw that around. Give it a stir. We're then going to add in our crushed tomatoes that we crushed up earlier. And we're gonna give that a good stir. Then we're going to add back in our chicken that we have diced up. And you know, you could use chicken breast in this if you wanted to, but chicken thigh is really flavorful and really inexpensive compared to other cuts of meat. But again, um, depending on where you are in Louisiana, who you ask, um, who you learn how to make jambalaya from, the recipe is going to be different for so many different people. Um, and I think that's one of the great things about it. Um, it's just a mix up, one pot meal of a lot of different things. So let me grab my... So now we're going to add in our stock and tomato juice mixture here. This is four cups. And we're just going to let this come to a good boil. And then we're going to add in our rice. And we'll see you in just a few minutes. All right, so we've come to a simmer. Now we're going to give ourselves a good liberal dose of some black pepper. And we're going to add in some hot sauce, just a couple of dashes. Let the ancestors speak to you. And we're gonna throw in two bay leaves. And then I have my rice here. So I rinse the rice. A lot of people are not gonna rinse your rice. Um, I always rinse rice when I'm cooking it. Um, it's going to get all that extra dirt and starch off the outside if you see like it's and I've let it dry a little bit. So we're just going to add this in here and we're going to let this come to a boil and then we're going to turn it down and let it simmer until all the juices uh, absorb into the rice and the rice is cooked. And we're going to stir it very regular, um, rarely. You don't want to stir it too much once the rice starts cooking because it'll become really mushy and you don't want that. So we're just going to kind of make sure everything's covered here. Let's set this to the side and then we're going to let it do its thing. All right, so we now have a good regular boil. I'm just going to give it a very gentle stir, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. And then we're going to turn it down to about medium low heat. We're going to throw a lid on it, let it do its thing. We will come back and check it every few minutes just to make sure it's not sticking and stir it. But every time you stir it, be very gentle with it. You don't want to break the rice up. You don't want to make it mush. All right, so we're gonna give this a stir. I'm gonna be very gentle with it. Give it a nice stir, just kind of fold everything in. Just wanna make sure, we're just make sure you're touching the bottom every time so that you're making sure nothing's sticking. And then make sure you kind of push everything back down to an even level so that rice kind of gets back in there so that when the moisture starts boiling again it'll cover it up Put it back on it. all right so we're almost done as you see this is a little bit creamier than cajun jambalaya what we're going to do is we're going to add in our shrimp we will be very gentle and kind of stirring it in again so we don't make our rice mushy so we're going to stir these up also going to add in some scallions or green onions. This is the white and the lighter green parts. I save the dark green parts uh, just to top this with when we're ready to serve. We're just going to give this a stir. We're going to throw the lid on, give it about five minutes just until the shrimp are done. And we're almost there. Alright, so once you have turned off the heat and let it set for about five to ten minutes, you are completely ready to serve. Let's see, you have it, it's creamy, the rice is done, the shrimp is done, everything's in there. So we're just going to plate this up for our taster today and see what they think. Hey, what's up y'all? Uh, I am Chris Campbell and I'm going to taste Josh's jambalaya. So before I'm going to add some rice. I like it spicy. Smells great. 
make sure you go away first because it's hot. It's perfect. It's perfect. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to follow us on Facebook at Birmingham Aids Outreach or on our website at BAOBHM.org. Bye.